It can be better still. How about some real sound? Thank you guys for joining me today on the Erskine Music Show. This is day seven. I've got Big Head in the back with me. What's up, Big Head? Ruby and Scooby are here with me, but I have an actual real live special guest who is going to come here this morning and going to read scripture. It is my lovely wife. I'm getting up out of the chair. I'm kicked out. She's in. Say hello to the masses that are out there. Hello to the masses. All right. You probably don't want music playing. But it is Erskine Music. It is the Erskine Music Show. You want to... Okay, today I'm going to be reading Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Okay. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication... With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm, the lovely Kelly. <laughs> woo Yay, thank you. You didn't want to stay and frolic and talk to the people? Dance to the music? Okay, well, you can dance to the music elsewhere. But anyway, that was my lovely wife, Kelly, who was there. Now you've got all the, all the heads. Ta all the talking heads have come and shared scripture. That's Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, reading about a passage that relates to the idea and the subject of thankfulness. Thankfulness. Are we being thankful during this time of Corona retreat, Corona reset, Corona... Um, <laughs> there's other words that come to my mind, but just the Corona pause that we're having in our lives. Are we being thankful? Are we thankful to God that he has allowed this, that he has brought this to the world for us to be able to reset some priorities and look to him. Well, we're here in Nashville, Tennessee this morning and it's raining on our heads. Hopefully it will not leak in my study. I've got a, a leak in my study that comes up from time to time. So if it starts literally raining on my head, I'll be forced to stop this and uh, deal with the leak. And because that, you know, rain and electrical equipment does not normally mix. So there's that. But I wanted to also say that we should be thankful uh, for all that God is allowing us to experience during these times. I want to get into a couple of topics today. I'll announce the topics before I get to them and then give you a little bit more commentary. Liberty University. We're going to talk about Liberty University. We're going to talk about things that you miss in this new season of life uh, that uh, we're not able to do because of quarantine and some of the other things. What do you miss? What do you miss out there? And then also, what are some things that you kind of like about this new season? If you can think thankfully about things that might be new and exciting and big and great. So anyway, this is the Erskine Music Show. As always, when we have artists that join in, uh, if you're an artist that's out there and you're watching this, please uh, get a link up to your music. That'd be fantastic to see a bunch of artists putting a lot of different things out there to help independent artists. Now that I have time to actually do this, I was having a conversation with my wife, and I was saying, hey, um, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> I know what we're all doing tonight. We're not going anywhere. There's no events that are planned, no events that are scheduled, and so everybody's just sort of doing the same thing, and that's a beautiful thing, so that we can focus on things that matter. So we're doing that, um, and trying to do that as a family progressively more and more. I'm so thankful, very, 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 very thankful to Jesus for his amazing and incredible salvation, uh, who has brought a wretched sinner like myself to himself and will take me all the way to glory. So anyway, let's jump into a few topics here, but hold on real quick. Let me rewind and go back to some things that I said yesterday. There were some big announcements that are not big announcements, but we'll talk about why those are not big announcements in the midst of making an announcement. And so those are coming back up a little bit later. So rewind, big announcement that's not a big announcement that's coming, and here we go. Liberty University, which you guys know is in the news um, often for some of the magnificent things they do. I think they boast perhaps the world's largest online uh, program, uh, world-renowned university uh, established under the uh, tutelage of Jerry Faldwell Sr., who was a very vocal voice in the moral majority, uh, the religious right back in the 80s, 
Um, his son, Jerry Falwell Jr., now is the president of that esteemed university. However, Liberty University has taken it upon themselves to be unlike everyone else in their immediate vicinity and probably the rest of the world at this point, at least the rest of America, in the fact that they are continuing their classes and class schedule, although lightened, although adjusted and modified somewhat, they are continuing their class schedule with students on campus, students, uh, as I was watching some of the, the videos and reports, students milling somewhat in smaller groups, but still having to, to traverse different places, faculty having to come in and, and do their various responsibilities and respected work there. Here's the deal. I would always, always, and have for the last three years, I don't know if you know this, um, I don't know if you know that I have been trying for the last three, maybe even four years to get an appearance at Liberty University. I mean, they're Christian. I'm Christian. I do Christian music. They have students. That's kind of my wheelhouse. And so we've been working and talking to the people over there, and I would love nothing more than to go to Liberty University. If Liberty asked me to come, I would not come. <laughs> if Liberty asked me to come today to do some uh, event at their university, I would not come. Huh, why is that? Well, you know, we're under this coronavirus uh, sort of stay in place, shelter in place order uh, that's being enforced to some degree. I don't know how effective that, that is, but to some degree, just to let people know that, you know, this flattening of the curve, this respite for hospital workers and personnel and staff, if they don't have to treat you, then they can treat some of the other people who desperately need um, the life giving uh, efforts that they're engaging in and so most universities in fact every university except for liberty has taken and heeded that warning i think there are some confirmed cases even on liberty's campus perhaps or even in the city of lynchburg virginia but here's the deal i've got four words for liberty university and if you decide to not bring me because of these four words shame on you you should bring me because of these four words but you should bring me when it's safe for the students and safe for yourself four words for liberty university and jerry falwell jr if you're listening it's okay online works it's okay online works <laughs> so basically what I'm saying by that is you have the largest online platform and probably most well advanced online platform of any university that's out there and this is certainly a time when you can flex those kind of credentials and make I think Liberty known for the esteemed university that it is as well as being able to take the proper precautions for your students, your staff, faculty, and administrators who are there. And so Jerry Falwell Jr., you might want to think that one through because you couldn't even get Erskine out of a Tarte to come to your university today if you were inviting me. So be safe, do what you know you need to do. But here's the issue that that speaks to. I answered that in four words, it's okay. Online works. I think it comes down to an issue of pride, really, as I was watching some of the interviews of uh, Jerry Falwell Jr., who was basically saying, you know, it's not that bad. People are just trying to scare. It's just the media. Well, maybe it's not historically going to be viewed as um, an epidemic crisis that kills 500, you know, million people. But for the people that it does kill, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> and so I just want to make sure that we're on the same page when it relates to this whole idea that sometimes in my own life, Erskine Music, you can be prideful about something and just, you know, put your foot down, say this is the way we're going to do it. And that's sometimes upon further reflection, not what needs to happen. And in fact, I've watched, and this is not a political show, but I've watched a lot of our politicians, the president included, who have sort of bowed up in this time. And they've just sort of kind of had this posture of this is the way that we're going to do things. And I know for a lot of people that instills confidence, the fact that you know where you want to go and you know what you want to do and you're resolute and you're resolved. I certainly get that. I'm that kind of leader as well. But I also recognize that there comes a time, and I would say this to Jerry Falwell Jr., I would say this to the president of our unit, uh, president of the United States, Donald Trump, there comes a time when it's actually okay to say, you know what, upon further reflection, maybe we should do it this way. You know what, I've been listening to some of my counsel around me, and you know what, there's a better way to do that. It's actually okay to do that. You know, as a believer in Jesus Christ, one of the things that is the highlight of what God's grace means is that I could not earn or make myself um, able to be saved uh, enough. It is, in fact, the grace of God that has saved me in spite of my sin. So that means I'm not perfect. 
Jerry Falwell Jr., you're not perfect either. Donald Trump, you're not perfect either. And so I pray for and continue to lift up like Second Timothy talks about our leaders and people who are in authority and positions. Um, and we need to do that. But we also need to pray that they would have a humble heart uh, in the midst of our praying for them as they lead our nation. All right, so let's get to another topic here. What do you miss about this season of life that we're in? There's a lot of things. People were going and coming. And there was a flow of traffic. People were doing this and doing that. And everybody was a moving target, it seemed, because we all had a busy schedule and we were probably too busy to really stop and reflect on some things. But what are some things that you miss um, about this new season of life? Well, Tim Hare, what do you miss? I mean, I, I can see you're watching. Mindy, what do you miss? Aaliyah, what do you miss during this time? You guys write me some things. Send me some notes. I'm watching you guys. You're watching me, and it's all good. But here's the deal. For me, it comes down to four words. Be, uh, wait, <laughs> yeah. Being able to hug. That's my big miss for this time. Being able to hug in four words. Essentially, I, in very appropriate ways, enjoy that closeness that actual relationships um, give us. In fact, if I had the opportunity to hang out with people as opposed to doing social media, I would definitely do that and have always erred on that side. Um, that's because my, that's the reason why I should say my online profile is so itty bitty but it's increasing now. Um, it's just when you have the opportunity to really be around people, to give people a hug, to uh, even, you know, guys, you know, we kind of do that side thing. We just kind of uh, come in, bump the shoulders and everything. That's just a term of endearment that I, I really do appreciate um, and miss during this season of time. We'll get back to some of those. <laughs> dap it up and just ha, bring it in there and do those kind of things. So that is something that I miss, but I'm hearing from uh, um, Aaliyah, the commute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Traffic not said no one <laughs> in any place in America. I miss the traffic in going to work. Uh, said no one. All right. Thank you for your jokes. Gathering with the church body, says Tim Hare. Thank you for that comment there. Obviously, it's a different season when you're not able to actually see people and, and to relate to people. Phone calls are nice. Letters are wonderful. Facebook Live is a great tool that we have. And um, even Zoom meetings that our church has been having, those are uh, usable uh, technologies. But I would say actually being in the presence of the church body and being with uh, fellow believers is an important thing. And I think we all miss that to a great degree. All right. So let's get to the third topic here. What's something that you like about this season? My question to you and you and you and you and you and you and all five of you and whoever else is a you once you watch this a little bit later is what do you like about this season? And it might be a brief season. But there's probably some new things that have come to your attention. And my four words for this season is technology uniting the world. Technology uniting the world. I actually got some correspondence and, and usually do um, worldwide throughout the day. Uh, I get up early in the morning and people who are on the other side of the world are still up and they're, they're getting ready to go to bed. And so I fellowship with them for a little while. And then as the day progressively goes along, there's different people who will contact me from different places in the world that I've been. And the cool thing about that is that technology is uniting the world. Can you think back to episode number one of this show? It was terrible. And maybe this is not great. But it is better. And I got some correspondence from some people overseas who said, hey, we were watching your YouTube, dot, dot, dot. So anyway, would you like some help in putting those together and making that a better presentation? Code word being dot, dot, dot. Wasn't very good, but it's getting better. And so I appreciate all of you who keep coming on here and making this a better show. But the technology literally is uniting the world. There's people that I've been able to stay in contact with, get in contact with, and do things with precisely because of this season that we are in. All right, let's transition with Let's Ride. Da -da -boom -boom -da.
this weather and live webcam count? <laughs> I don't know. Does it count? I love it. Getting to watch family and friends, preaching the gospel, ministering to people, their talents and gifts. Yes, yes. So that's the song from an artist that I know called Erskine. Big head back there who is doing um, his dead level best to stay connected with the people and to give people some quality Christian music content as well as talking to a couple of the issues of our day. Big announcement that's not a big announcement. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I got sound effects. Why am I doing my own sound effects when I have sound effects? Ruby and Scooby, can you help me out on this? I've got sound effects. Okay, here it is. The big announcement that's not an announcement that actually becomes a subject of discussion is we were contacted by our foster care agency. We're a foster family and they were wanting placement for a couple of kids. And so we prayerfully thought this is a really difficult time and we know that it's a difficult time for people. So we said yes. And then they said, well, we get back to you. And then we prayed about it some more. And then we said yes some more. And then they came back and they said, nope, we're going to decide to place them somewhere else with another family. Oh, it was so heartbreaking. We were looking forward to bringing these kids into our home. We've done that before. We've adopted our two kids. You got a chance to see them uh, a little bit uh, earlier. And then we fostered numerous kids in other situations. And here's what I know about this season. And this is something that is a matter of prayer. Um, Christmas, holidays, really tough time for families that are all sort of sheltered in place during those times. Abuse goes high. Drug abuse goes high. And so there are kids that are literally in the most vulnerable positions in life at the most vulnerable time at a place where they have no other options except to be sequestered with their family. And sometimes those family situations are not good. And so as a foster family, we recognize how important a ministry that is. But as you pray for all that's going on, could you continue to pray for these kids that are potentially even not in a foster home, but they're in a, an abusive home right now and they're in a difficult situation and they're having to shelter and stay in place. Um, and it doesn't take much imagination to figure out that if the situation was bad before, just how much worse it probably is now that they have no options and ability to be able to get out of those homes. And a lot of the even meeting with our foster care agents is having to be done correspondence over webcam and um, Facebook Live. And so that's just a really difficult situation. So the, I was going to hope to make an announcement today that we are bringing on board a couple of other foster kids, but uh, our home stands open. If you know some people who need some help, certainly that's one of the things that our family is equipped to do and, and ready to minister in that way. And so let's get to the upcoming announcements. The song release, again, uh, the song Is It Worth It is coming on April the 16th. And so you'll start seeing more progressively more and more advertisement toward that end. And then uh, I have a Facebook Live concert that's coming up, and we're going to decide a date on that, and we're going to give that to you soon. So here's the deal. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Keep uh, loving the Lord. And I'll just leave with these concluding comments. Man, I'm almost at a point, and I know that this is not good to say, but I'm going to go ahead and say it because I've actually thought about it. it I've got a little bit of uh, coronavirus burnout. I don't watch a lot of news, but the news that I've watched is usually generally not good. And so everybody and their dog has done a message series on hope. I think we've broken the world record, the Guinness world record for the number of pastors, preachers, teachers, religious uh, people who have taught a lesson on hope. I just want to be clear about the fact that if you're not a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, you don't have any hope. You do not have hope. You can falsely put your hope in man that they'll be able to come up with a cure, but there's going to be something else. And your days are numbered anyway if you're not a follower of Christ. And so be prepared for the day of the Lord's coming. Be prepared for the day when you stand before the Lord as appointed to man once to die and then the judgment. The only hope that we have is found in Jesus Christ. But to my Christian brothers and sisters who are out there, I was listening to a message yesterday and it greatly encouraged my soul on the reason why we need to trust the Bible. The reason why we need to believe in the Bible. That was what gave me hope. Is all these other topics that are out there that are related to God's word. And so... I understand that there's people who are fearful right now and they need um, lessons and studies on hope, but I'm kind of like that parent that's like, I'm not going to do your work for you. God gave us a book. It's got 66 books in it. It's called the Bible. Why don't you read it? Because all of the hope that you need and all the answers that you need are found in there. 
don't just rely on what other people are trying to tell you about Jesus. Even though that's great and that can bring you some momentary peace and kind of stabilize you, you get into the book yourself, you actually begin to uh, read it yourself. Which, final announcement, and then we will be rocking out here in some Erskine music. Um, on Thursday morning, if you're in Central Standard Time, it'll be 7 a.m. Probably won't be awake, but if you are, you'll be welcome to, to join me. Um, Eastern Standard Time, that'll be 8 o'clock, and then various places around the world. I'll be on a show that my buddy Wisdom is doing, and I'm going to be teaching on how God refines us through difficulties. And so I'm going to be coming from Jeremiah and various other places throughout the scriptures and then bringing that lesson home uh, in a few days now. So that's going to be Thursday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. And this song is called Paparazzi. Let's rock. Uh, Erskine Music Show. We're about to get up out of here. so much for your time today let's have a word of prayer and then we be out father thank you so much for your love for us thank you for guiding us to christ jesus um, and lord the revelation and the knowledge of that is available because we know the imprint of our creators in our hearts we long for uh, the knowledge of who god is and yet we have squandered that knowledge and chased after other things help us to return to your word help us to be a season of revival in our world and in our nation oh god be merciful to us. I know that there are abortion clinics that remain open and that there have been people who have been arrested, believers that have been arrested for picketing outside of abortion clinics. Imagine that. We can't say no to evil, but evil can flourish in our country. So Lord, have mercy on us. If you decide to kill us all, that would not be unjust. Uh, but Lord, we just pray for your mercy and that there might be an extension of your time of grace upon this planet and upon our nation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much. God bless. We out of here. I was playing open mics.